That's my favorite right there, the top steer. It's the most rare. There's only 444 of them ma manufactured. And to find one is very, very rare. You see very few of them uh, still are going today. 127 years ago, this was cutting edge corn equipment. Yeah. <laughs> Introduced in 1875. Gotta look at the price. Yeah, for 65 to 75 dollars. I'll give you that. I'll give you that for it now. Yeah. <laughs> Third built D industrial out of 91 built and sold. Right. Many, many of John Deere tractors today are still power shift driven, but this is the very first one that they made. It's all PTO driven. So this thing doesn't run off hydraulics at all. It's... No hydraulics at all. And it accomplishes that. Or how do you control it then? Okay. Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and I've just been on a tour of one of the coolest John Deere antique tractor museums probably in the world. Just remarkable, not just the number of tractors, but the how rare some of them are and the stories behind them. So I'm here with Jack Purinton, who put this collection together over time, and he's gonna tell us a little bit about some of the different tractors and, and maybe just a little bit about your story and how you came to own 150 antique John Deere tractors. We just got the John Deere dealership in April of 56. That was the year I was in high school. And um, of course, my dad also collected tractors. I've got a film over there where he collected several tractors and put them together. But over the years, in the later years, I said, if their hands start, they're his, and if they're lucky, start, they're mine. However, that's not the way it all is. But, uh, you know, you, you just, uh, just like right now, I'm going to go to uh, to pick up an, a 1934A, which is very, very rare. There's only 600 made, and how many is still left, who knows? Because that's the first year they ever made. The first year they made a, a row crop tractor is the A. John Deere. And so you've been collecting these for 70 years now right. and you've come across quite a variety. Right, yeah, I mean, you know, you'd be surprised, surprised where you find what. So to start with, we start in this room, which this is like the, sh the showroom you see from the road. There's two of these Waterloo Boy tractors that are obviously some of the oldest. So can you tell us a little bit about these well, two? Well, this tractor is was totally handmade by a man that I was at a sale and I saw one of these go through the ring, and I chased him outside, and he, I persuaded him to build me one. But it, it's everything is, he's got, he's built his own frame, but it's, it's a copy the Waterloo, the factory Waterloo Boy at 50% size. And it, it does run, it drives, most all the parts are uh, John Deere lawnmower parts, John Deere transmission, the John Deere lawnmower transmission, John Deere steering, John Deere front axle, but then the rear wheels are manure spreader wheels. And so this was never manufactured. That's the jump, the Waterloo boy that was, and then this is a, this is a really neat replica of it. It's a replica I uh, handmade. The day I, I went to the farm to pick it up, he was making a John Deere D the same way. Hmm. The same kind of an engine, but it was, it was a restore like a B, a John Deere D tractor, which is kind of similar, but it's still a, white front and white hood and all that was different. So this one, I've only seen in books and magazines and stuff. I've never seen one in person before. How did, how'd you get this machine and, and how old is it? And Well, a guy named Ted Clymer in Springfield, Missouri, he had bought a 730 tractor. He was hauling hay and you know, east part of Springfield, Ozark area, the roads are all curvy. A car come around the curve, hit the tractor and broke the back axle. Oh, not only the axle, the whole housing. We were one of the first dealers to have a truck with a hoist on it and a winch. We went down and picked up his tractor and brought it up to Lamar to fix it. He came up and well, he wanted to fix it, but he didn't want to buy new parts and he didn't want to buy salvage parts. And we had a 730 on the lot. He said, I'm bailing hay and I need to go. He said, if you'll take the back end off that one on your yard, put on mine. He said, I can go to the field tomorrow. I said, whoa, wait a minute. I have to talk to dad. And but then he says, if I want to do that, I can get the Waterloo Boy tractor. 
So I went and told Dad, and he said, well, if you get that tractor, he said, you know, that's worth some money. So he says, okay. So that's the way we fixed the tractor. We brought the other one in, stripped it down, fixed his, and took it home. And then he says, well, we'll go get the Waterloo Boy. It was out in Kansas. But we went out to Kansas and picked it up. So do you know when they started making these? Uh, or when John Deere acquired the Waterloo Boy? That I probably did know, but I know that's an 18. A 1918? 1918. Well, let's walk around it and get a better look. Okay. So th this tank says kerosene on it, so this would have originally, you could have ran it on kerosene or probably any multiple Cat different fuels. Kerosene is what they run on. These tanks right here, you put gas in these. This tank here and over here, there's, uh, you put gas in them, and just like the other tractors too, they call them all fuel, but you put gas in here and see that'll run down to the engine. Before we turned the camera on, he showed me that this is how you started it. You right. put this in here and right. you just crank it. Yes. And if we wanted to, we could start this, right? Well, it wouldn't start today because of fuel and yeah, you get fresh fuel in it and it, it'll run. New price was $1,050. Yep. Even with inflation, that's crazy to think about. Here you can see the steering mechanism, which uses what I would call a worm gear with a chain wrapped around it to actually turn the front axles. It's really ingenious, the things they came up with. Well, you put your oil in here for your push rods, and you put your oil in here for your... That's what would no normally be under a valve cover. Right. Pull things out in the open. Right. And then this is... Are you in this picture? I'm about the fifth one back. All right, well, he's got three big rooms full of tractors here, so we'll move on to the next room, look at some other stuff. You know what that is? No. It's wood. Huh? It's got a serial number on the bottom of it. They got it made it. Wow. B. We are mainly focusing on a few tractor models, but this place is legitimately a museum, and every little piece in one of these cabinets has its own story. And I spent about four hours going through it, but there's just no way we could cover everything. But we'll hit some highlights. And if you're curious or new to the channel, the third person walking with us is my father. John Deere was originally a plow company, and their claim to fame was that they had a plow that, that the dirt didn't stick to, is what right. you were telling me earlier. They, they made, he made the first plow out of the saw blade. I think that's neat. Yeah. This is the original John Deere plow, like the one that was chrome plated in there. My dad had it chrome plated by a local company that was in business here in Lamar. This is the original plow. Where my father got this, I do not know. It has the wooden wheels and it's it got to be really old. But this this the wheels part of it is a Gilpin. Gilpin company. Gilpin sold their wheel attachment to John Deere for a riding plow. Of course, John Deere really liked that to increase their sales. But uh, the Gilpin plow, they were 65 or $75, and they put Gilpin people, John Deere put four of those on their own board, board of directors. So that's how important that was to John Deere. And uh, there's a picture of it. And most of the, you see a lot of these are steel wheel, but I feel like this is wooden wheel is older than a steel wheel plow. Says, built on the principle of simplicity and ease of use, used a lot, utilizing a single lever control introduced in 1875. And look at the price. Yeah, for 65 to $75. I'll give you that. I'll give you that for it now. Yeah. <laughs> and this is something that he had to explain what this is. Looks to me like uh, something from a amusement park or something. But this was actually a farm tool. Yeah. It's a it's a Dane corn shelter. John Deere bought the Dane Company in Atumwa, Iowa. Atumwa, Iowa, is where uh, the John Deere rakes and mowers and 
balers and stuff are still made today. So you would put the, the corn in here and you had to just crank that? Yeah, hole. you cranked it. That sounds like a, a tough day's work. Uh, we didn't bring any corn. <laughs> we used to, uh, my dad uh, had corn in the crib and he didn't go to town and buy a bag of seed corn. He take the nicest ears, take the best seeds off there and save them and use it to replant next year. Sounds like it makes more sense than the way they do it now. They, well, you don't know where your seed's coming from. Or... Yep. Well, there's just different models. In fact, I have another one. There's three models here, but I've got another model. That it's all steel. It's different. And would this have originally been hand cranked too, or did it always yeah. run off of a? No, oh, here, here's the crank. When I got it. When I got it, it had a hand crank on the other side, over there where the belt pulley is now. Mm -hmm. But you could turn it. But to be what a job it would be to turn this big machine with a crank and and shell two ears of corn at a time, plus all these gears. So, Bob, my guy that takes care of the museum. He set up the engine on there to run it, and uh, you know, as a display, I put the crank in there, and it, it was it did two airs at once. Turn the crank. Here's a magneto that fired the points. That's what they do. And what would this have been on? Something like that, or any number yeah, of different farms. It could run an auger. It could run it's like having a Briggs and Stratton would be now. Yeah. And then you were saying here you've got logs of all the tractors you guys sold. Yeah. You come in here and the guy who knows his grandpa bought a new tractor and you know it used to be a lot of that people come in and look at the. So what, 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 this starts with 1904 and then you write the year in. So mm -hmm. these were from around the 40s. Yeah. And you said you'll have people come in to see if they can find mm -hmm. the record. Oh yeah. Their family had bought. Yeah, a lot of that is in there. And what was your John Deere dealership called originally? Barton County Implement. Yep. And you still started use that in, name. but started out in 54 and it still is Barton County Implement. Even when we were Legacy, see we had we had the Lamar store and the Joplin store and the Halbein store and you know we just kept adding more stores and John Deere says wait a minute you can't have Pyrnins and Lockwood, Barton County and Lamar, Joplin Farm and Lawn I said you gotta have one name. But that story is essentially why you don't have small independent dealers anymore that John Deere kind of pushed everyone that oh, you have to yeah. be part of a big... They came in either buy more stores, sell your store, or we close you up. That was the three choices you had. Uh, the guy that uh, bought us, we sold five stores and the guy bought 22 stores in a year and a half. I can see logistically where it has some advantages to the John Deere, but I just, I, I hate that there's no, there, there can't be a small John Deere dealer right. anymore. That's right. So d were you just saying that that's you in that track yeah. right there? Yeah. And how long ago was that, that you were? Oh my gosh. Our kids are 50 some years old now and they were little kids. And you were, you were doing a tractor pull on a, on a 4020? 4020 or 4010, I don't remember which one. That would have been a 4010. Sounds like you guys had a lot of fun with it. <laughs> oh, we did. We did that for years and years. But when it finally stopped, is we went to Springfield. So then they were starting to get these monstrous thousands of dollar tractors, you know, and went to Springfield and they said it didn't have a, a wrapper around the flywheel. Well, how are you going to put a wrapper around the flywheel on a tractor? <laughs> so they wouldn't let me pull. I came home. I took all the accessories off of it and stole, sold the tractor. Now he's already taken me through and shown me all of these, and we could spend hours doing it, but probably better just pick one or two. That's my favorite right there, the top steer. It's the most rare. There's only 444 of them manufactured, and to find one is very, very rare. You see very few of them uh, still are going today. Well, let's take a look at it. There's how many was totally made and how many in 33 was only 444 produced. And so obviously it's this top steering mechanism was the was right. the most unique thing about it in right. that year range. They See didn't that? have that. that tractor there, it went down through the side. 
This one over here was a side steer. It had an arm, kind of like a case, over on the other side to steer it. So then, was this the first year range when they started doing that at all, putting the top steers on? Right. Okay. Right. And then you were telling me that you're also, you're getting ready to get a 1934A, which was the the first year they've made right. those? Right. It was 34A. Uh, it made 600 of them. And uh, I'll be going down in uh, New Mexico to get that tractor. It's about 1,000 miles down there to get it. You have an idea of what a tractor like that's worth? $37,000. Restored. Runs. Drove it in the parade. Brought it home and drove it in the parade. You got spoke wheels front and back? They're round spoke wheels. The anatomy of find them are cut off. That's a cut off on that tractor there. Those are factory wheels there. In this year range, everything was going to be a pull start. Right. Or right. Manually started right. like that. Eagle starters was in uh, 34, 35. I may not be exact on that, but right in that range. They had a, most of them had a starter right on top, cogs in the wheel, on the wheel. They had a band on there that you put on there, the starter on top. This is the oil filter here. Mm -hmm. Right here's the, see that right here? It's called the redhead. That's called the redhead. When the pressure came up, that came up like that. There's no oil gauge. That was your oil gauge. Mm -hmm. I'll push that up. That's called a redhead. And what what was unique about an orchard tractor? <clears throat> well, it was low down. They also had an orchard dress where the fenders came all the way around the side, too. But these are, are nails to keep the limbs from knocking the fuel tanks off protection over the radiator and the fuel cap and fuel cap. Had an electric start mm -hmm. in 47 on this. Mm -hmm. And then, weren't you saying that the same engine is in that crawler over there? Yes, it is. That's a Linderman crawler. The engine, the whole chassis is the same as both tractors. See, here's one with a starter on top and a ring gear. You can see that gear in there. That's what my 41 looks like. Uh, so um, what was the use for, for one of these crawlers? Uh, orchard. They were very popular. Obviously with the tracks, it would go anywhere it wanted to go. Mm -hmm. You could even get blocks in there to run it on the road. This guy right here hasn't taken a sick day or a vacation in, what, 30 years? Long time. I, I, I think that's admirable, but I also think at some point he ought to finish this one and start he's, on another one. He's dedicated. <laughs> now this you said this was in the industrial the yellow yes but you, you're also saying it's like was higher geared so it, it yes, wouldn't it have made a great pull pulling right. tractor it pull scrapers with and, and road graders and things like that at a higher speed didn't take as much system. third built d industrial out of 91 built and sold yeah, if I saw that out in the field, I wouldn't even think John Deere yeah. would be in yellow. Well, I would, yeah, I would have assumed that someone had just repainted it. But they still use yellow for their industrial. See, this is also uh, white tread, but it's a, it's a side steer. Hmm. I'll be 85 here and pretty soon. I was born in 38. Well, you're, you're not that old, then. Well, <laughs> you're... And you, you haven't outgrown playing with toys yet? No. <laughs> now this is one of the coolest things I've ever seen. I didn't know something like this existed. So first, I guess if you want to tell us about the tractor, then we'll look at what's on the back of it. It's a 38 Model A John Deere. Got a counter box on the front. It's got some dozer pads in the box off a of bulldozer. Um, got it in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Uh, the man specialized in the, the loaders. I bought a, I bought a loader from him prior to buying this one with the tractor and all. Is there anything unique about this tractor no, that it no. had to be to run that loader no, on it? No. You could have put this on almost any from that time period. Well, you could put it on it. Put it on there. So what's really unique here is this rear loader that, right. to me, seems almost like a backhoe, but it... right, it, it is operates about like one. All PTO driven. So this thing doesn't run off hydraulics at all. It's, no hydraulics at all. And it accomplishes that. Or how do you control it then? Okay, your your footwork 
controls the, the pivot because the boom has to go out. Your hand work works the cable, which moves the bucket in and out on the on a track. And the bucket automatically trips when it goes clear to the top. There's an automatic trip on it, and it'll, it'll dump. See this arm right here trips the bucket. Okay, so whenever you run it all the way out, you automatically dump whatever you got right. picked up. Right. And the more I see of it and, and figure out how it works, the more interesting it is. Yep. <laughs> and it, it, got, this, this boom lifted up too, didn't it? Right. So it could pick up, lift up. I got three more in the warehouse down. down there. Got what? I got three more of them in the warehouse. Oh, yeah. And at that time, would they have used this to move hay or? No. Just strictly a loader. Didn't you say, like, uh, for manure and stuff yeah. like that. And you do. Well, actually, a guy told me that his family hired a person to build a, dig a basement for a house out in Westboro County. And he said they, in turn, like, was so impressed, they bought a new one and they never put it together. And I have only found out about probably 10 years ago that they sold it for scrap. Man, which I already had this. I, I'd give anything for the brand new one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they sold it for scrap. Wow. If you can't find a buyer, look a little longer. Somebody is going to want that. <laughs> yeah. Guaranteed. It never was put together. You got a sprocket on the PTO, runs up to this chain. Right. And, runs in, and there's clutches in here. There are clutches in here. Got a chain that runs it, but then you got a, a clutch that makes the. the and uh, these pedals made it right. turn, S swing right or left. It it releases one clutch and pushes the other one in. That's what you're doing. Because clutches are turning all the time. You were saying was was this the first one of these they ever made? Yes, it is. Many many of John Deere tractors today are still power shift driven but this is the very first one that they made is built in is introduced in the public in the fall of 64 but it was built and tested in 63 and before they had three of these and they kept this one with the serial number on it and they destroyed the others and you said the serial number was 0001 there, there's a serial number 65001 so the, everyone's heard of the Deer 4020, very popular it's a tractor power, model. Power shift transmission. But this is the first one they ever made like this. Right. And how did you end up with this machine? Well, um, when John Deere went out to the new factory out northeast of town, the sound guard cab tractors and all that, these were all obsolete at that time. And uh, the downtown building was seven stories high where they built these tractors. And they had a, a large chain link fence of several of the tractors that they wanted to dispose of. And uh, they put them up for bid all inside of this fence. And there was tires and wheels and tractors and all kinds of stuff. And you took, they took a bid on it and I bought it. So there were several bidders. And the day after that I was awarded the bid, I have five phone calls, bam, bam, bam. Jack, what would you take for that 4020? Jack, what would you take for that 4020? That's the reason I had Gary Collin go get it, get it home quickly the next day. Now, was that back when it was new, or was that years later? It was a demonstrator. It had some hours on it. Mm -hmm. it was, uh, that was when they introduced the tractor to the public in, in uh, October of 64. And then once you bought this, you didn't just stick it in a barn somewhere yeah. to hide it. You went out and we, put it to work, right? We, we bailed straw with it for 20 years. Great looking machine. And that's, that's the original paint. It's not repainted. Really? Now that's surprising. So yeah. you, you did probably keep it inside a lot because it's not faded. The guy at the factory, he, he gave me a sticker to put on there that says, too good to repaint. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Of course, it's had a new seat cushion put on it, but all the rest of this stuff is the way it is. Down through there, he's got a 330, 430, 530, 630, 730, the entire series all in good shape. 830. 830. 
Which isn't the 830 kind of hard to get? Yeah, they are. Because that, that was, not many people used that bigger tractor back that time. For the horse pulled it, but. Yeah. There you go. You can sit on here like this. And that knife under there, cut and you, you, you grab the corn. Hmm. And when you get your arm laid, then you lay it down and you go, keep going and get another arm load. And then somebody come along and tied it. So later on, they had a corn binder, did it all in one time. So this is obviously horse drawn. And then you just had this sharp edge here. Yeah. And then you could adjust the height with that right. handle back there. I mean, and they just cut it with that edge. And you right. had to you had to be working pretty, pretty hard probably to gather right. it up. And right. Yeah, you just gathered it. Then you laid it down. And then somebody come along and tied it with a string. And then somebody else come along and shock, shocked it, made your shocks. Wonder of what year range they would have been making and using something like this. Well, right here was, it was a- uh, 1896. Yeah, 1896. 127 years ago, this was cutting edge corn equipment. Yeah. <laughs> this was the, you didn't, you didn't have to go around with a corn knife to cut it. Mm hmm Pretty, pretty impressive that you still have one put together. Mm -hmm. But I, I could see why they wanted to put an engine on one. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have another one. Mm -hmm. but, uh, and this was a two-man job. You had these, yeah. front, these one, one guy over here. side seats. One over here, one over here. You get two rows at a time. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Hey, so is this a bulldozer right next to it? Yes, it is. John Deere. There you go. Uh -huh. It's a John Deere... Uh, 440, 440. It has a Detroit engine in it, two-cylinder Detroit. It's got a five-way blade on the front. That rack on there has been hand welded on there. I was looking to see if it had one of your your little plaques with the year and stuff on it, but no, I didn't see it. No. You know these things right here are really uh, worth the money. Actually, what uh, the deal was. When these signs came out, Dad never put them up. He's supposed to put them up on the road. He never put them up. Oh, that's a neat sign up there, too. And it's a, was, did they at one time use that color scheme? Yes. Yes. So they have not always, I know that with the old deer signs, a lot of people like the four-legged deer. Yep. As opposed to the two-legged. I, I didn't know that they, I'd never seen a sign look that yep. looked like that one. Well, the only reason that's way up there is because we've been shot at so many times from way down there, you can't tell it. <laughs> there are bullet holes on this thing. There's yeah. Holes there. And you had your still over there. Yeah. That, that thing's, that's old. That's a chain driven piston pump and that's your air tank up there on top. The uh -huh. bull's tank. Now what was this actually used for? It's, it's a sprayer. It, it's supposed to have uh, spray booms on it and uh, the spray. Wow. See, there's, there's the pump, and uh, you, you sit on the, this, this shows the in and out of gear on there. Then you, you got that valve's on here. That's how you move the booms? Yeah. Well, that, you, you had booms out there. The booms were, uh, fixed on here, this had, just like any boom, there's a hose with a uh, pipe on it. You said this is your father on the, yep. in the picture on mm -hmm. that? Yep. Have you guys had this since 48 in the family? No, that's when it was made, but it, it's, it's after the war. Jeep engine, Jeep, it's an Empire, E-M-P-I-R-E, Tractor Corporation. I'd never heard of them before. Well, like I say, I've got a book on them. It shows that in New York, it just shows thousands of them. They, they built a thousand of them to sell to some other country. This one says serial number 890. Things up there this morning we had was going to have to return. That's this piece right here. Hmm. Except that's got a bolt in it. But that, that for, the, for that seat right there is what that was for. Had a suspension seat on it. Yeah. 
Well, let's see. Actually, we had one of these on our tractor, John Deere. Uh, it's a, I forgot, gosh, I can't forget the brand of it now, but that was a very, very popular seat. Well, this cylinder's no good. See, that should be a. And at the time, that was luxury. I mean, yeah. to be able to have a little bit. We, we had one of these on our tractor. See, the B John Deere had a kind of a, well, like that right there. Mm -hmm. So you took you took this off, put that on there. And that was a great seat. So we, you, you didn't have a... Yeah, that's a tough spring. Yeah, see, LP, especially in Oklahoma, were very very popular because fuel was just a few cents a gallon. And um, another thing is, oil life on them is probably twice the life. It, it don't it don't. Dirty the oil. They're very economical tractor. Yeah, lower cost of maintenance is always a selling point. That's exactly right. Are you saying that ran on propane? Oh yeah. Wow. So that see that one over there's propane. I've got I've probably got well there's two propanes over there. So I looked at that and I thought, why are those gas tanks shaped like that? But I didn't that's think propane to ask. Tank. Huh. Yep. See that four thirties propane and that five thirties propane. They had a a tank that's actually on a, you can get two ways. You can get a tank that was concealed under the hood, or you can get one that came up through the hood and stuck up about six, eight inches on end. You can buy them either way. But that tractor, those type tractors are very, very gentle to handle. They're, they're good working tractors. They're, you know, they're not as clumsy as these or whatever, especially the 730. I mean, but these are made to go do heavy work. But the, just for every barnyard tractor, you can't beat that for baling hay and wagons and so much use. And these were from the late 50s? 59. 59. Because they started the multi cylinder in 60. Of course, this one is a fire ship, but there are very, very few fire ships. Back here it says the one of 518. And then, then when you see that, I've seen numbers like that several times, one of so many. Out of 518, how yeah. many of them are still in good shape? Mm -hmm. It's a lot less. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's... I don't care if it's a car or a truck or tractor or whatever it is. It needs to be... Well, Jack, I tell you what, I really appreciate you taking the time to show us all of this. I'm going to put in the, the comments or the description of this video in the pinned comment um, more information about Jack and, and this place. So if you want to check out their website, you can do that. But I really appreciate you taking the time. Well, and I think this is amazing history you've got yep, here. It, it is. It takes a lot of work and a lot of time, but I mean, it's I, I don't regret a bit of it. Well, I appreciate you guys taking time to watch the video, and we'll see you on the next one.